Welcome to a new episode and to the new year of the Future of Business podcast. I'm April Corey with Fast Future Publishing, and today I'll be reading another part of the Global Drivers of Change that I co-authored with Rohit Talwar and Iva Lazarova in The Future of Business. If you're interested in learning more about the book, visit us at fastfuturepublishing.com. In Section 2 of the book, Tomorrow's Global Order, we explore the question, what are the emerging political and economic transformations that could reshape the environment for society and business? This section provides a wide-ranging discussion of the ways in which political and economic governance systems need to be reformed to serve the needs of society and provide a sound footing for the future conduct of business. At the heart of each discussion is the twin recognition that technology is creating new possibilities and society's expectations of these systems is evolving rapidly. There is a clear acknowledgement of a growing demand for transparency, equity, participation, and access for the whole of society. Here's the Global Drivers of Change for Section 2 of The Future of Business. Section 2, Global Drivers of Change by April Corey, Ava Lazarova, and Rohit Tawar. We have identified 30 key drivers of change that are likely to set the context for future political and economic transformation. These are categorized under three headings, policy and governance, economics, and economic systems. Policy and governance. Rate of democratic transition. As one regime after another toppled in the wake of the Arab Spring, expectations rose that more nations would move to a democratic form of government, either through conflict or peaceful means. Now, however, the resulting difficulties of adopting a democratic model have highlighted the capacity-building challenges and the hurdles inherent in transforming governmental and societal structures in such a short time frame. Reframing of Global Governance Institutions The global shifts of wealth, power, and influence towards the emerging economic giants is driving demand for the restructuring of global institutions like the United Nations, the World Bank, and the International Monetary Fund. Power will continue to flow to the populous and increasingly economically strong nations, led in particular by China, India, and Brazil. New alliances and groupings will form, such as the Shanghai Cooperation Organization and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, and they will seek to increase trade and political ties, bypassing the West in many cases. Democracy 2.0 the rise in digital technology has given many citizens easier access to governments, who, in turn, have greater access to the thoughts, the opinions, needs, and wants of all citizens in a flexible, adaptable, and real-time manner. Individual citizens can increasingly be consulted on any matter and are able to bring their issues to government attention. Country Mergers Many governments will struggle to finance everything they are expected to by their citizens, from policing and social welfare to education, climate change protection, and economic development. The map of the globe will change, driven by economic and environmental forces. Many smaller and poorer countries may find it impossible to cope on their own with the accelerating pace of change and the cost of keeping up to speed with a globally connected planet. By 2025, we could see 20 to 25 country mergers with potential at-risk nations seeking to come together to create the critical economic strength and attract the investment required to serve their populations and compete in the hyperconnected era. Country fissions. New countries could also emerge. Since 1945, the number of countries worldwide has grown from 60 to 196 today. New states developed with decolonization in the 1960s and 70s, and even more gained sovereignty with the breakup of the USSR. Now Catalonia, Scotland, the Western Sahara, sections of Myanmar, Iraq, Syria, Libya, and even Saudi Arabia are among the many regions today that could break apart and form new nations in the next two decades. Alongside country mergers, we may also face a future of an increasing number of smaller, independent nations. Neo-Cold War Tensions could increase between Russia and Europe and the US, especially if Russia's economic situation declines further and it continues to seek to annex former parts of the Soviet Union. A new Cold War between China and the U.S. and Europe could arise if China is seen to be becoming too strong economically and to be pursuing a global political stance that goes against the Western nation's wishes. Additionally, the proliferation of nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons could introduce new state players into this situation. 
Rise of Brutal Fundamentalism A growing number of fundamentalist groups may emerge from a variety of religions and worldviews as their leaders seek to pursue religious, political, social, and economic ambitions through the bullet rather than the pulpit or ballot box. Governments and global institutions will struggle to respond effectively because of the lack of desire to engage in ground conflict and the increasingly outdated notion of outright victory in such conflicts. Networking and Automation of the World's Legal System While world law may not exist in the foreseeable future, the world's legal systems are expected to become increasingly networked. This could lead to ever closer alignment of legal frameworks and the increasing automation of the law as it becomes embedded in our environment. For example, vehicles that automatically fine us if we exceed the speed limit. Political Experimentation Worldwide, there is a growing view that the current governance models simply are not appropriate for a world in transition into the digital age. Democracy, single-party states, dictatorships, and monarchic rule are being scrutinized as governments experiment to see which new models can best serve national goals. In increasing instances where the government has been viewed as utterly ineffective, citizens have joined together to solve problems that were traditionally handled by the government. Empowered Populations New models of government coupled with technology advances are empowering populations to share knowledge, be aware of their environment, and make informed and responsible decisions. One challenge to leveraging all of this data and information is the ever-growing shortage of data scientists. However, these empowered communities are still able to challenge the roles of the decision makers currently running politics, health, education, and welfare systems. Civic Activism Civic activism is the combination of civic activism and the digital world. Civic activists use their coding and computer programming knowledge to replace slow, outdated government bureaucracies with fast, usually internet-based solutions. By networking citizens, governments, and technologists together, local problems can be discussed, ideas brainstormed, and apps developed which solve the initial problems. By streamlining government bureaucracy, citizens are better able to understand and participate in their local governments, and governments are made more transparent and accountable to their constituents. Rise in e-government Globally, countries are pushing for more e-government projects in order to cut costs and improve internal communications, as well as to gain a better understanding of and provide services to their citizens. These initiatives are already changing the way businesses and citizens interact with and access government services. Privatization of Public Services Worldwide, governments are increasingly turning to the private sector to deliver public goods and services. Often, commercial providers are more efficient, cheaper, and have a quicker response time than government-run public services. However, when an increasing number of public services are delivered by the private sector, questions around governance, transparency, and risk emerge. Economics Economic Growth Despite economic uncertainty and system fragility, economic growth, that is global GDP, is expected to continue growing into the next decades. According to projections, the global economy is expected to grow at an average rate of over 3% per year from 2011 to 2050, doubling in size by 2030 and again by 2050. Public Debt Public debt is the total amount owed by a central government to its creditors. The global financial crisis and the Eurozone sovereign debt crisis have both left developed economies with high levels of indebtedness. Total debt for OECD has risen from 79.9% of total OECD GDP in 2008 to 111.2% .2 in 2014, according to OECD figures. Economic Power Shifts Emerging economies are experiencing growth, allowing them to exert more influence over the global economy. This shift in power may lead to the rise of a new international system. Leading the way for the last decade were the growing economic juggernauts of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and to a lesser extent South Africa. Possibly following in their wake are the so-called next 11 countries. Bangladesh, Egypt, Indonesia, Iran, Mexico, Nigeria, Pakistan, the Philippines, South Korea, Turkey, and Vietnam. These are identified as having the potential to become some of the world's largest economies in this century. 
Global Flows As the world becomes more interconnected, the flows of goods, services, people, and finance across borders continues to grow. These global flows represent over 36% of global GDP and are creating new degrees of interconnectedness between countries. The degree of connectedness of a nation is seen as an indication of its current and political prosperity. It is estimated that countries with a larger number of connections in the network of global flows increase their GDP growth by up to 40% more than less connected countries. Feminomics In both developed and emerging markets, by 2020, roughly 1 billion women who had been living at a subsistence level will enter the global economy for the first time as middle-class consumers, producers, entrepreneurs, and employees. They will have roughly as much economic influence as the populations of India or China. Governments will need to address any gender-based discrimination that may arise. Businesses will need to reassess not only what goods and services to provide these new customers, but also how to meet the needs of these new employees. New Trading Zones Worldwide, governments are entering into new trade agreements, which in turn will stimulate the development of new trading hubs, creating new growth markets and increasing trade volumes by 2020. Global Inequality Over the past 20 years, global inequality has increased dramatically, a trend expected to continue into the future. In 2014, Oxfam reported that 85 of the world's wealthiest individuals had a combined wealth equal to that of the bottom 50% of the world's population, or about 3.5 billion people. It is projected that by 2016, the wealthiest 1% will own more than half of all global wealth. Research indicates that greater income equality within countries correlates with higher unemployment and crime rates and lower than average health and social mobility. Continued Globalization As the world shrinks through transport improvements and even faster communication technology, so the flows of goods, services, people, and capital moving between nations and across continents continues to increase. While globalization tends to lead to market liberalization and expand trade in most countries, concerns arise over the additional levels of complexity it adds to business decision-making and the potential for cultural dilution. Technological Long-Term Unemployment by 2025, it is estimated that up to 50% of current jobs at every level will be replaced by software, robots, or smart machines. As more jobs are automated, fewer are being created by the emerging sectors. Those that are created require higher skills and fewer people. This could result in long-term unemployment, placing massive pressure on governments, businesses, and society to rethink business policies. It will also force a reevaluation of approaches to education, lifelong learning, job creation, and job placement assistance. Long-term unemployment would strain government social security budgets, lead to a rise in poverty, and drive the expansion of the shadow economy as people seek to work outside of the tax system. Economic Systems Systemic Fragility The global financial crisis of 2008 illustrated just how fragile and interconnected today's global operating environment is. Every aspect of finance, government, and commerce was affected by this systemic fragility. This growing sense of risk is driven by continued economic volatility, continuing rich-poor divides, the complexities of financial markets, declining government spending, the disruptive impact of crowd financing and cyber currencies, increasing polarities between political groups, and the demand for truly sustainable infrastructure investment and resource allocation. Systemic Anti-Fragility Risk analyst Nassim Talib introduced the concept of anti-fragility to systems thinking with the idea that a system improves as it is exposed to stress. While a rigid system may seem more stable, in the long run it is unable to cope with unexpected shocks. Conversely, an anti-fragile system contains built-in redundancies that help it thrive and adapt to changing forces and pressures. Governments and businesses are exploring anti-fragility concepts to develop better policies and regulations concerning financial systems in particular. Networked Economy The networked economy is the emerging economic environment that is driven by the massive, multi-layered, exponentially growing, real-time connections between people, devices, and businesses. 
It is the convergence of social networks, business networks, and the network of devices connected to the Internet of Things. SAP estimates that the networked economy will be valued at 90 trillion over the next 10 to 15 years. To adapt to the new economy, businesses will need to become mobile, social, and always connected to both internal and external business and social networks. Because the networked economy hinges on information, companies will need to address issues concerning the ownership, privacy, and security of that information. Global Derivatives Market The global derivatives market is an integral part of the international financial system and global economy. Worldwide, businesses use derivatives to hedge risks and reduce uncertainties about future prices. Defaults on subprime mortgages, a type of financial derivative instrument, partially triggered the last global financial crisis. Most financial derivatives are not traded on an exchange, and so total exposure is difficult to determine. Estimates vary greatly, and some suggest the face value of all derivatives outstanding is over three quadrillion dollars, more than 40 times the entire world's annual GDP. Full Reserve Banking Full Reserve Banking only allows banks to lend out the assets they actually hold. This is the alternative to dominant fractional reserve banking system, which many believe has created unimaginable instabilities in the global economy that will drive future economic collapses. Full Reserve Banking requires that banks keep the full amount of depositors' funds at all times and that they may only lend out the actual assets they possess. Some economists argue that full reserve banking is more robust and less liable to create the types of credit bubbles, systemic risks, or too-big-to-fail scenarios that occur under fractional reserve banking. Technological Hegemony Countries with ownership of core technologies typically enjoy higher levels of added value as a result. Hence, a country's science and technology development level could decide its status in the international arena. Socioeconomic unrest. With debt issues unresolved in a hypervolatile global economy, the potential for further downturns is very real. The cost of recovery could see further redundancies and austerity measures similar to those experienced in Greece. Populations may not be willing to put up with this while others continue to make disproportionate gains in wealth, further widening the gap between rich and poor. Governing the shadow economy. The shadow economy exists alongside a country's official economy and consists of illicit economic activities like undeclared work and black market transactions, which avoid government regulation, oversight, and taxation. Current estimates place the annual market value of the global shadow economy at $1,829 billion. Many countries who once tried to control the shadow economy are now moving toward a model of acceptance acknowledging that in some instances, it can actually deliver many of the services governments are unable to provide, such as policing, education, and healthcare. Thanks as always for tuning in today. If you do like the podcast, go into iTunes or into Stitcher, however you listen to the podcast, and do me a favor, give us a rating and a review. Or if you have any specific feedback, you can always reach me at april at fastfuturepublishing.com. You can also follow us on Facebook as Fast Future Publishing or on Twitter as FutureBiz. That's F-U-T-R-B-I-Z. The links will be in the show notes. To pick up a copy of The Future of Business or to find out more about us, visit us at fastfuturepublishing.com. Until next time, I'm your host, April Corey, and I'll talk to y'all later.